Yeah, I had a lot of people reach out over the last couple of weeks, Dave, asking video what I do. We have video. started recording. So, hey, everybody, welcome to the Mortgage Coach Tuesday interview. Every Tuesday, 9 o'clock Pacific, Mortgage Coach community is coming to you live. I've got Dan Keller as today's guest. What's up, my boy? What's up, man? Good morning. Good morning, Mortgage Coach community. So I have interviewed Dan countless times, and we're, we're on a little bit of a, I don't know, a streak between mortgage strategies and mental toughness and digital mare. Dan seems to be just getting after it with all the things that matter most in today's market. Uh, I kicked off a contest, and Dan, I'm sure you're familiar with the, the Mortgage Coach 3010 game. Have you checked that out a little bit in the group? I have. Yeah, I'm a, per I'm a participant. I know you're participating. Are. Yeah. So, for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about a game. Uh, Wally Elderberry put in $1,000. Jeremy Forcier is going to do a site visit and uh, let you hang out with him in the wine country. You know, there's just a list of value. Michelle Town offered, $100 million producer Michelle Town offered a uh, uh, spend a day, spend a weekend with her riding horses and talking mortgages. So here's the deal. You got to make 150 calls a week, prospecting calls, outbound calls, and you need to do 10 total cost analysis every week this month. Whoever does the most wins prize money and time with some of the best loan officers in America. So, you know, I know one thing I know for sure that anybody and everybody that played that game would be proud of themselves, yeah. would have energy, and you'd have loans, you'd kill it if you did 150 calls in a week and you did 10 total cost analysis. What do you, what do you have to say to that, Dan? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like you dangle the site visit with Jeremy, the, the prize, you know, Wally giving a, a grand. The person that you're gonna become, the loan officer that you're gonna become after doing this is gonna change your life. It's, that's period. And, and so it's, it's ultimately get in and experience that wow factor of, oh, that's what happens. That's how some of these guys that are producing at 80 to 100 million or, you know, I say anything over 50 million, they're making calls. We are making hundreds of calls a week, period. So it's, I'm, I'm excited for the feedback you're going to get. I bet it's going to be absolutely crazy. Yeah, no, it, it is. So remember the way to participate is just to post your activity and your results in Facebook, in, in our Facebook group, Mortgage Coach, Facebook Mastermind, put a post, let us know what your activity is. And at the end of the month, I will be picking a winner um, based off of cumulative activity, quality of post, and, you know, just stay tuned for who the winner is. So here's, here's the thing I know for sure, the difference between wanting to be successful and yep. being successful, it's, it's your habits, you know, and... You, you know, it's like you pick your habits and your habits pick your success. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing I know is that picking habits and creating habits requires mental toughness, yep. requires discipline, requires intentionality. And, and so with, with that said, Dan, you and I did a Friday call a few Fridays ago. We talked about mental toughness. We talked about becoming the digital mayor. The reason we're making this digital mayor part of that conversation is because to be the digital mayor, you've got to get outside of your comfort zone. You've yeah. got to create videos. Nobody just knows how to tell stories, do business, you know, create life on social media. That is a learned skill yeah. through practice and repetition. Yeah. And, and it just requires getting out of your comfort zone. So, so Dan, I know you had a vision for how you want to handle today's call. Uh, I, know, I know one thing for sure. I want to kind of know your story a little bit more around how you went from, you know, not successful to successful to where you're at today, where you're consistently doing, you know, significant volume and you're doing it in a, in a quality way. Yeah, I'll give you a real quick two minute background because I think it's really important. I, I, I'm really intrigued with any person that I talk to, including you um, or any successful person, kind of their story and what brought them, you know, what, what are one or two things that I can learn from your life and how you uh, got to where you're at. And so I think it's important that, that everyone, whether you're producing at 10 million a year or a hundred million a year, 
I think this story, today's call is going to be super relevant and, and very, very impactful. So my background relative to this call, prior to mortgage, um, I was a college and semi-pro baseball coach. I played baseball at a very high level. My passion was baseball. And when the game basically said at 22 years of age, Dan, you're old, you're no longer welcome, you're no longer good enough, um, I didn't take that exit uh, too nicely. And so I said, I'm not, I'm not done with baseball. I, I love this game. I love this sport. So I continued on to coach. And my, my passion was to be a college or pro baseball coach. And so I uh, went on to graduate school, got my master's degree in sports medicine, did my grad assistantship over there at Gonzaga, and uh, just put in the work, grinded for free uh, for years. And I uh, ended up moving back over here to the Seattle area and started a baseball program at a community college, helped start a baseball program at a community college um, in 2002. And I didn't know any, I had no reputation other than I was, a, I was a good ball player, um, but I had no reputation as a coach and I had everything to prove. Uh, so myself and uh, his name is Levi Lacey started the baseball program at Everett Community College. I jumped in and took over the strength and conditioning and hitting side of it. Within two years, within two years, we were sending kids uh, into the major league draft and on to division one colleges. Within three years, we had four kids drafted in the top 10 rounds of the major league draft. It was unprecedented in um, junior college athletics. And so a lot of that success that I experienced as a coach was um, shared the same ingredients that contributed my success as a ball player and it was self-discipline, okay? So I was not getting paid anything to coach college baseball free but I was showing up like I was getting paid a half a million dollars in my mind at 23 I was already a division one baseball coach at the University of Washington making a half a million dollars a year like I wanted to like my goals were and so I've always had the mindset I think the framework the foundation of a mentally tough individual and I just transitioned that into into sports I had trained athletes in baseball we talked about this on the last call, Dave. Uh, I don't know mortgage coach community if you're familiar with the game of baseball, but the game of baseball is designed around failure. If you get three hits out of 10 at bats, that's considered a 300 or 30% batting average. That's considered failure in most uh, in life. Well, that will get you into college, pro, and maybe even the Hall of Fame. And so being able to battle through failure, um, is a big is a it's in baseball if you can battle through failure you're going to have a great opportunity of succeeding and so my job as a coach was to teach young athletes how to be mentally tough so that they could battle through that failure every single day as a hitter you literally have 10 plus people 12 plus people working against you you're the at bat you're the batter but you have not only do you have the defense which is nine players you have a coaching staff and a scouting staff you have umpires um, that literally could be working against you at any at any given time so i frame all of this so that you understand that when um there came a time in my life in 2008 where baseball had me all over the country had me working crazy hours my wife said i didn't sign up to be a single parent um i had to make a career change and so as I got into mortgage, the mental toughness aspect allowed me to change careers and start over in one of the most challenging times economically in the history of the United States of America. I got in the mortgage industry in 08 and 09. And um, I struggled. I learned 100% learned mortgages by watching top producer interviews that you published back in 2010 and 11. Uh, I used the internet. I used YouTube. But I had no formal coaching until about 2014. And that's when my life started to change. I wish I would have figured that out earlier. But the, the great, I would say, the great results started to occur in 2015 through currently. And that's where I really started to understand the importance of self-discipline and mental toughness relative to sales and leadership. And I think that's what we're gonna focus on today. I love, I love that. So, so guys, we have Dan Keller here for another 50 minutes. If you have questions, if you need help, post it in Facebook Live or in Zoom. Also, I do want to give you guys a heads up. We're going to start focusing more on Facebook Live. We think that's a better way 
to distribute our content. So we, we recommend that is the best place to view and the best place to make comments. So I'll keep an eye on those, Dan, as we tell the story. So let's keep, let's keep on this story because I think it's, it's a story that other people have where you were successful because you spent, let's just say, eight hours or more a day at being productive. You know, like that got you to the, let's just say, 20 to $30 million a year in production. It wasn't pretty. You know, you probably, you know, burned out some team members. You were probably burning out yourself. Uh, but in a, in a non-pretty way, just putting in eight plus hours of working hard, yeah. you had that level of success. So first of all, I want everybody to you know, recognize that just dedicating yourself to five to eight hours of hard work and prospecting can get you to one place. Yeah. And, and today you're, what, about in the $80 million range? Yeah, we were just shy of $84 million last year. Yeah. yeah, 84 million. And I, I know firsthand because I've spoken to your team. I've been around your team. You're now at a point where you're doing, you know, 80 million and you have team members around you that you're not burning out. You know, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're on point on process. So why don't, yeah. if, if you're on this call and you have a question about getting to that 20 to 30 million, post it below. But let's talk about that path and how you establish yeah. mental toughness and got to where you are today. Yeah, I think the, the important thing is, and many successful people will tell you this, um, most successful people will tell you this, that it wasn't, success didn't look like this. It wasn't this even slope over time where they were, you know, continuing to grow. It was ups and downs. And what I think I've learned from studying successful people is that many of them experienced success, lost it, or, or had a setback. But the, the common ingredient, the common denominator is they knew what they were doing to achieve that success. And then they just started to, they had the realization to go, okay, hey, this worked to get me here. I have a setback. Well, don't forget what worked. And so I think a lot of us on the call today, I, I want you to kind of look back during times of your life, whether it was financially successful or in business, but look back in times when things were going really well for you in business. Let's just talk about business for now. Um, I look back in the beginning of my career, like you mentioned eight hours. It was more like 16 to 20 hours. And so I had to learn an industry that I knew nothing about. And I found out the hard way right away that you have to actually know how to do loans. Like I did this all on my own. And so I could sell, I made the phone calls, I did the pot buys to all these real estate offices. I asked people that I knew to introduce me to someone that needed to refinance or to purchase. I had no problem putting myself out there selling, but I didn't know the product that I was selling. So around the clock, I had to learn mortgages. The other thing is I was in control of all my marketing. So I would go to work when the, when the sun was shining, when people were in the offices and I'd meet people. But after hours, that's when I started working on my marketing. I started a mortgage blog back in 2010. It was the best thing I ever did because I wrote about mortgages. The best way to learn about something is to write about it. So I would study it. I'd write about it. We all know who Linda Davidson is. Back then, she was the FHA guru. I found her on the internet. I literally copied handouts that she would like literally scan onto the internet or whatever. And... I would basically write about FHA. I'd write about USDA. And so doing that around the clock, hustling during the day, making the sales calls, going to appointments, going to real estate offices, asking for the brokers, and then working around the clock contributed to, I mean, in my first three years, I got up to about 30 million by the end of my third year in the toughest economy ever. That right there, if you were to apply that same work ethic to today, and this is what I love what you're doing with this 3010 challenge, it's no different. So I always, anytime I feel like I'm struggling or things aren't going, then my numbers aren't where they need to be. I go back and be like, well, what am I not doing that I once did that, that, that allowed me to have more leads than I could handle that allowed me to have a record month. And so I want to encourage all you guys listening right now. I think that's really important. And that ties into your challenge as well, Dave. So I want to make sure we give love to the community and the questions that are coming in on Facebook. I want to remind folks, Facebook Live, at some point we may not be broadcasting to participants on Zoom and only be broadcasting 
and Facebook Live. So if you haven't checked it out, go to, go to Facebook Live. But one person wanted to know how many units you're doing to get to 80 million. Yeah, about 220. About 220. Um, another person had asked what CRM are you using? So I use Jun Jungo, but here's the thing. I don't use it. Like I need Jeremy Forsey to coach me on it a little bit better. I have, that's where I park all my info. So it's safe, all my clients info, but I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I use, I have spreadsheets. I go, I'm old school. I have a CRM that keeps track, but I, I put my, my top 50 past clients on a spreadsheet and I call them. I love them. I put my realtors on a spreadsheet. And I call them. So super, super, super simple. Beautiful. Uh, recommend whoever asked that question. Last week's interview with Willie Elderberry, he talked a lot about how he's using Jungo, how he's yep. using the integration with Mortgage Coach. Yep. Go back and check out last week's interview. Uh, another person just asked, um, do you think that time blocking is a byproduct of mental toughness? Um, you know, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, that's such a good call or such a good question. And that's going to be, that'll, that'll segue us right into the core of this call. Um, 100%. Yeah. It's self-discipline. So I have non-negotiables every single day. I have a three hour time block. Many people call it power hour. I don't care what you call it. For three hours a day, minimum, I make calls. So on Mondays, they're realtor calls. On Tuesdays, they're update. I call every listing agent, every buyer's agent, every active client that has mutual. Wednesday, I call every single one of our pre-approvals. And, and sometimes we have to split that up. I have my loan partner sometimes make some of those calls because I can't get through them all. But, and then there's a, there's a theme day for every single day. It takes massive self-discipline, you guys. So yeah, whoever asked that question, 100%, you, you time block it. It's got to be the most important. The, the, the mentality that I had, I learned this from Todd Duncan a long time ago. Making an appointment and put something on your calendar is one thing. Sticking to that appointment is another. And so like, if you had a cavity and your tooth was causing you massive pain, you got your appointment with the dentist at nine o'clock and he was going to have to do a root canal, not fun, but he was going to have to do a root canal. It was going to take three hours. Would you miss that appointment? you wouldn't miss that appointment. So you have to literally time block like you're going to a doctor. You have to have that self-discipline to do that for yourself. Great question. Well, yeah. And, and I've interviewed so many top producers. Well, they may have different times in which they, you know, time block prospecting. I, I have yet to talk to a top producer that doesn't have an appointment to do it. It doesn't do it consistently. Uh, every day of the week. And, you know, my favorite interview last year was Josh Metal, uh, Prospecting Mastery. And he talked about how from 9 to 11, you know, they turn off all their media, they have yep. a five minute gratitude huddle, and they prospect for two to three hours every single day. When I interviewed Wally yesterday, he talked about how they time block from three o'clock. He does it at the end of the day. So, you know, everybody has a different rhythm, but everybody has a rhythm in which they do that. Um, for the person that asked you to repeat that, I want to remind you this will be posted in the YouTube channel. Uh, Dan started that at about 9.14. So either go back and listen to the interview or go back and start listening at YouTube at 9.14. I want to, I want to keep this rolling. Yeah. So, so Dan, before we um, get too far into some of the other stuff, someone asked about your team. Could you just describe your team so we can yeah. get a feel for – you yeah. know, the team that's doing this production and your leadership. Yeah, I have an incredible team. I have a loan partner, which basically he's a licensed uh, uh, loan officer assistant. Um, his name is Jason. He's absolutely incredible. He's been with me for over three years. I have Jessica, who is my executive assistant. She helps me with marketing. She manages my schedule. So she controls my calendar. She puts this call on my calendar. It's there. I just, I wake up in the morning and I follow my calendar. If I have the time block, if I have three hours of prospecting. I know who I'm prospecting. When I get in my office on my desk, Jessica has a list of the calls I make. So there's no way around it. And then I have to sign off on that. You guys, this is what's important. It's one thing to put something on your calendar. It's one thing to have your assistant or someone put a list on your desk, but my accountability is to Jessica. When I, all those calls are made, I have to sign the top. So I think that's really big too. It's not just saying you're going to do something. It's doing it and someone holding you accountable. And then I have a loan partner. I call him LP2. He's a production manager. His name is Dan, and he takes everything from mutual acceptance or TBD underwrite all the way to closing. 
So that's my team. And then I do have, um, I groom a couple of loan officers. I don't like having junior loan officers on my team. So if I choose to bring someone in, I will coach them. I will groom them for six to 12 months. And then I let them loose in our branch. And so right now I am mentoring um, two young men and they're doing an absolute incredible job. And so how many units again per year? So we did last year, we did 217 units for a little under 84 million. So, so I just, you know, for anyone out there that's listening that you don't have a team, you know, getting a team when you do not have a mortgage practice, and I think it's eight loans consistently per month, doesn't make sense. You've got to, you know, in order to be a good leader, you need to be a good leader of yourself. And, and, and there might be some markets where it's six consistently, but I just want to remind you, if you're listening to this, you're like, oh, Dan does 200 and some loans because he's got a team. Well, that's true. You, you know, to do 20 loans consistently a month, to yeah. do 15 loans consistently a month, it, it does, for the most part, require teams. I mean, I have interviewed solo LOs that do pretty crazy volume, but I mean, it's a rarity. There's, they'll admit they don't have what would be considered a well-balanced life. Yeah. You know, they're, they're working insane hours. So it needs a team, but I would just put it out there to everybody. Yeah. You've got to self-discipline yourself so that you can be who you need to be to now go hire more yeah. people that can run a process and a system. Anything you want to add on to that before yeah. we, we move so forward? I hear this, yeah, I hear this all the time from loan officers. Well, you, you, you do 80 million because you have a team or your team helps. No, I'm the salesperson. So I'm the loan officer. My team helps me with production. There's no difference between me doing 80 million and someone doing 10 million other than the fact that I prospect more than you and I spend less time on and in files because my team does that. So there's no use. I see this all the time in our industry where people get teams and they don't do what they should be doing. They're still working on files. They don't delegate. So the whole idea of having a team is so that I can 100% of the time be prospecting and sitting face to face with a client, giving them an incredible mortgage planning presentation. That's it. And so that's the only difference. Everyone's like, well, I can't relate to you because you do 80 million and I do 12 million. You can relate hundred percent to me because all I do is prospect. Love it. So remember, if you have questions, I am focusing on Facebook live and this will be our main platform for broadcasting mortgage coach interviews. So great place to watch it. It's good to see the numbers go up. We've got 43 people watching us at Facebook live right now. We've got well over a hundred in zoom. So, so Dan, you are, you got a big crowd today and there'll probably be three to 500 people that watch this YouTube channel. So, so let's talk about some baby steps to grow that mental yeah. toughness. Let's say I'm a loan officer. I don't know if you saw that video I did with Jeremy where he said, Hey, you got three choices to make. Yeah. And he pulls up, are you going to fail? Or are you going to do 50% of your greatness tracker and then 50% of excuses? Or are you going to get it yeah. done? So let's, let's just say, I am the loan officer that's, yep. that's failing, you know, week after mm -hmm. week after week and, and hitting my goals. And, you know, everybody's goal is not to do 50 million and make 30 calls a day. So let's, let's assume mm -hmm. that the goals are more moderate than that, mm -hmm. but they're still missing those goals. You know, what are some things and advice as a, as a leader to, you know, grow some calluses, you know? Yep. Any, any yeah. ideas? Yeah, absolutely. So when I talk to loan officers and I coach loan officers in my branch, um, you're, there's really only a couple of reasons why you're not reaching your goals as a loan rep. One, you're not prospecting enough. Two, um, you don't know what you're talking about. You're not confident enough to go out and sell yourself and sell mortgages. And, and, and lastly, three, you lack self-discipline because it's, we, we overcomplicate this industry. It is, it's yes. Getting a mortgage, originating a mortgage is difficult, but selling anything, listen, you, you, you talk, I hang out with a lot of super successful people. Most of them are in some form of sales. All right. And every single one of them, including myself, I will go on record to say this. I never imagined a seven figure income from selling anything. I never, I did not grow up or go to college or even get into the mortgage industry thinking that I would have a seven figure income selling. I just didn't. And so the reality of it is, is it's insane that if you just perfect some of those skills, 
you're, there are no limits on income, on success, whatever your motivation might be. And so I think the number one factor, and this is what I wanted to talk about today, because this is what's really kind of moved me. You've, we talked on another coaching call, Dave, what helped get me from 30 to 50, 50 million to 70, and then 70 to where I'm at. And it's just a more intense focus on self-discipline, period. And so I think this, this coaching call today can be titled self-discipline, the importance of self-discipline. And so you talk to Jocko, you talk to any of these, you know, these guys that are success coaches or motivational coaches and speakers, when it comes to achieving your goals, whether it be health or fitness, let's talk about self-discipline. If you're on a diet, it takes self-discipline to stick to your diet and to not eat a hamburger or to go have that milkshake, right? It's the same thing. It takes self-discipline every single morning to go to the gym and to punish yourself in the weight room, but it's for a reason. And so I think nowadays where, where I'm at kind of in my career uh, personally is I've realized the value of self-discipline and I've realized ultimately as a 43 year old man, like I understood this as a college baseball coach 20 years ago, but as a 43 year old man, I truly believe this and I'm teaching my kids this, that you can have anything you want in life if you have self-discipline and if you have mental toughness, period. And so I just want to share that with the, with the mortgage coach community. I have kind of, kind of a recap of what we talked about two weeks ago, Dave, um, where we spent a lot of time talking about really what I believe mental toughness is. And that's owning the mental conversation with yourself. And if you're on that call, I think you can, you can maybe go back and rewatch that, but we'll probably hit on some of the main bullet points. Mental toughness is owning the mental conversation with yourself. And so if you understand what that means, so every single morning at 4.53 a.m., my iPhone rings, my alarm clock goes off. My subconscious is saying, man, it feels good to stay here in bed. Dan, you're doing really good on your diet. You don't need to go to the gym. The, this bed feels good. Your wife looks so comfortable laying there next to you. Your puppy's right at your, you know, right at your head. Now, mental toughness and self-discipline is telling your subconscious to take a hike and get your ass out of bed and go to the gym. And so doing that, saying it's one thing, doing it's the other. And so it starts, I learned this from Hal Elrod years ago, it starts when I set that alarm the night before. We talked about this on the last call. I walk myself through what I'm going to do. I'm setting this, I'm getting up at 4.53, I'm getting my butt out of bed at 4.53 and I'm going to the gym and this is what I have to do and I'm gonna do it. And I set the alarm and I go to bed and I tell myself that however many hours of sleep I'm gonna get is good enough, is good for me. And so I think that's one thing is how you, if, if you, I'm taking this kind of to, uh, graduate degree level right now, but if you can program your self-conscious or your subconscious into not being able to negotiate with your conscious, dude, it's powerful. And so, so I mean, that's, yeah. No, dude, this is great. And Louise Daxton, what's up? It's good to have Louise on today's call. She just commented saying mental toughness. He's playing my love song. Uh, so, so I love that. Uh, I want to remind you guys, if you have questions, keep the questions coming down below, or if you just have comments and thoughts, uh, this is a mastermind. So keep, keep it coming. So the three of the business activities we talk about a lot that drive success in mortgage coach land are prospecting. You know, if we don't have leads, we don't have opportunities to give a total cost analysis. And, and I always look at the total cost analysis as just a perfect loan experience for a borrower. You know, you can give a good loan experience without a TCA. You can't give the best loan experience. So prospecting, TCA, and then because we believe that, you know, we live in this modern world of social media and, and we need to, you know, build personal brands, you know, we believe in video. You know, we believe in video. And those are like three business activities. If we do all three of those, We'll build personal brand, we'll give great advice, and we'll do lots of loans. And, yeah. and I've done my job as Mr. Mortgage Coach. So what I'm hearing from you is, okay, that's great, that's the goal. 
And if you're on this call, I want to know what is your goal? If your goal is 30 calls, 10 TCAs, 30 a day, 10 TCAs, put it down below. Um, you know, what are your, call it your business goals, your mortgage coach goals. But it sounds like you're saying, no, we, it, it doesn't start there. It starts with how you wake up. It starts with, you know, is working out something that's important. It starts with other um, self-discipline habits before these business habits. Is that what I'm hearing from you? Yeah, you're hearing it correctly. So here's the thing, like that's only going to get you so far. Saying, and we see this all the time, Dave. We see loan officers. I see realtors and loan officers. We all see this in January at health clubs. They're packed. Everyone says that they're going to resolve to losing weight, to going to the gym. What happens in February? Half, half the attendance at these gyms are gone, right? The attendance goes back down. And so we see this all the time in, in sales, real estate and mortgage, where people go to a conference. They get fired up by Todd Duncan. They, Todd gives you the tools. He tells you what to say. You go back and then you don't do it or you do it for a week and then you stop. And so it's deeper. That's why I think this, this whole idea around mental toughness and self-discipline is so much bigger than we, than we know. And that's why I'm, I'm coaching it. I'm teaching it. I, per, I personally have, have surrendered to really becoming a master at this. And so it, it starts so much deeper at the subconscious level. The thing about mental toughness, and I learned this from Jocko, Doc, Jocko Wilnick, he, mental toughness is a skill. Think about it. Think about it. Just like sales, just like, you know, learning new dialogues. If you can get better at it or worse at it, I, I believe that mental toughness is perishable. I believe that self-discipline is perishable. So we have to, every single day, we have to do something to become more mentally tough. Every single day we have to do something to improve upon our self-discipline. So how do you do that? Um, I ask super successful people like you, like people that I'm being mentored with right now, I always just ask them one thing. Um, how do you improve upon your mental toughness? And I just see what they say. The common answer is super simple. Mental toughness, how you can improve upon your mental toughness is simply doing something, whether it's a conversation or it's an action, whatever it might be, doing something you don't want to do and do it every single day. And so about a year ago, I hate doing dishes. I just don't like the feel of the water and the soap on my hand. I just do not like dishes. Anytime there's dishes in the sink at the end of the night, I do dishes. Plus I know that it really makes my wife happy. My wife doesn't like doing them. And so uh, that, that's one thing. The other thing is I hate working out in the morning. I'm old. My, my, my knee hurts. I had surgery on my knee in college. My lower back hurts. I'm getting older. It's tougher to get up in the morning and work out. I'd rather work out in the evenings. I work really hard. I have kids. I want to be home. I want to go out and throw the ball with Hudson. I want to go to his games or Allie's volleyball games. So sometimes if I put off my workouts in the evening, my workouts get put on the back burner and then they don't happen. And so I have to work out in the morning, period. Not to mention... Mentally, what time? Like what time do you work out in the morning? Well, I get up at four fifty-three. I'm at the health club by about five fifteen, five twenty. Got it. Yeah, for about an hour and a half every single morning. I'm home by seven. That's why my alarm clock says three wins by seven a.m. Okay. Three wins by. I like that. So that's even. There's winning by noon. Yeah, but there's there's three wins by seven. So what are the three wins by seven? Three wins by seven is one. I did not negotiate with my subconscious. I got out of bed at four fifty-three. I did not hit the snooze. Okay. That's win number win. one. Win number two is I don't listen to music when I work out. I listen to a podcast, a top producer interview. I listen to something that's going to make me better, stronger. It's going to empower me. And then number three, I bring my wife coffee in bed every single morning before 7 a.m. Those are my three Boom. wins. Three wins. So I love, I love that. So we got Todd Brooks fans win by noon, and those are your business wins. Yeah. And Dan has his personal wins. Yeah. Three wins by seven. So we got to think of a whole Dan Keller's three wins by seven. You need to, you need to run with that brother. All right. Hey, so, so, so more stuff from the community. So Jordan just commented, this is exactly what I needed to hear. Fairly new loan officer here wanting to breed more consistency in my routine. So Jordan, good job getting after it. Uh, you know, Brad Flores just made a comment. He said, feelings versus principles. Learn that from Dan a few weeks ago. You mind expanding yeah. on that one? Yeah. 
you know, you're, so when you have principles and I coached on this, I think this is, I know you, I know, is it Brad Flores? Yeah. 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 What's yeah. up Bradley? So I coached on this, your, your feelings, um, is, is like your subconscious, right? So your feelings will dictate when you have principles, you don't make exceptions on your feelings. For example, when you have a principle that you're going to remain committed to your wife, you don't look at other, other ladies. Like it doesn't even tempt you. The principle is there. When my principle is that, listen, I'm sticking to my diet, I'm self-disciplined, and I'm not going to eat that cake. My wife's a baker, by the way, too, so it's super difficult. I'm married to, to someone who's doing photo shoots in our house for our bake shop, and there's always leftover goodies. But when there's a principle there that I'm going to commit to my diet, that my diet is more important than my feelings, things start to happen at, at, at extreme levels. And so that's really what I coach you about on that feelings versus principles. And it's a powerful idea. It comes back to <coughs> not negotiating with your subconscious. I'm not negotiating. A principle is a principle. Love it. By the way, Louise likes the copy to the wife in the AM. And uh, I'll bet a lot of folks are liking that. And then I'm thinking about the dishes. I'm gonna, that's gonna be one of my takeaways. Yeah. yeah. I do do the dishes, but I, I would say I'm not nearly is consistent as my wife would like me to yeah. be on that. And uh, yeah. so that's gonna be a personal takeaway for me, daily dishes. So yeah. Kelly Savage, if you're hearing this, I'm committing to daily dishes. I love All that. right. So, so guys, keep the questions coming. Yeah. You know, this is a great call. One person just did a shout out. How it's one of their favorite calls of the year. So Keller, you yeah. are killing nice. it. Nice, nice. Well, well, let's do this. So we got about, 34 minutes left. Yeah. I don't want to completely pivot, but one of the things that you're really special about is how you're building personal brand in Seattle. I mean, you, you have this mission. I've interviewed you. You want, you know, I, I don't know if it's every realtor in Seattle to know you, but you know, you want to build this personal brand mm -hmm. as being an educator, yep. an advisor, an expert on building wealth with real estate yep. in Seattle. And you want real estate agents to know you as that, that teacher leader and anybody that follows you on Facebook, you know, they know that you, you yeah. show up every week, you create yeah. content, you've done over a thousand total cost analysis, you're killing it. So let's, let's talk about building discipline around being that digital merit. Cause most loan officers I know that live off of referrals yeah. and they're local to a market. They want to, they, they're like, I want to do that. But then yeah. things are getting in the way. Either yeah. they're, they're not doing the video. They're, you know, there's a lot of gawkers that like yeah. watch Facebook, but don't participate. Yeah. And one last caveat before I unleash you here, there are people that it's just not you. So I also want to make sure everybody on this call, you create your goal. If, if it's not you and you're just going to make promises that you're not going to keep with yourself, it's okay. There's a lot of ways of being successful yeah. in the mortgage industry yeah. and not everybody has to be the digital mayor. Um, so I am not here to say if you're not the digital mayor, you can't close a lot of loans, but I am saying yeah. in this social media world and video, there's a big opportunity to be such. And if that is your goal and you're not doing the baby steps to get there, let's have Dan throw down some advice yeah. to, to get us there. So let me frame it this way, you guys. It, in, anytime you're going to start something new, which for the most part, the amount of questions that I get on a weekly basis um, around, hey, Dan, how'd you edit that video? How do you do your videos? How'd you do this? How do you do Facebook Live? Um, our industries are behind. Our industries, real estate and lending are behind. And so just like starting anything new you have to understand really how to accomplish something and so what i wanted to do is i wanted to wrap up on the whole self the, the self-discipline mental toughness part of it when you understand that mental toughness and self-discipline is a skill you can get better at it just like when you go to the weight room if i want bigger biceps what do i have to do i have to train my biceps but i don't have to just train them i need to put them under massive stress that means i have to lift heavy weights that also means that i need to eat right and I need to nourish those muscles. It's the same thing with self-discipline. It's the same thing with mental toughness. Since it's a skill, you can improve upon it. And so the only way to improve upon it for mental toughness is you have to do hard stuff. You have to do just like working out your biceps or your chest or your legs. You have to take that muscle to failure. You have to fatigue it. And so when you do something that's challenging, when you encounter an obstacle, 
and you power through it, you become more mentally tough. So I'm not saying, hey, go out and look for a massive obstacle in life, something that would set you back. Things do that. People pass away. People get ill. Businesses shut down. Things like that. And how you handle those circumstances is a byproduct of your mental toughness. But you can go out every single day, like I said, from doing the dishes to getting up early and working out, starting a working workout routine, making more cold calls. So this 30 call challenge is big. It's going to make you the byproduct of this. It's going to make you mentally tougher because you're doing something you don't want to do. Cold calls. It's not like people sign up every single day and are like, yes, I'm pumped to go out and make 30 cold calls or 10 cold calls or two cold calls. Um, when you learn, when you do that over time and you learn to make those, they just become less, it becomes less of a hurdle. You just do them. And so I think the anatomy of self-discipline, the anatomy of mental toughness is confidence, is self-worth, believing in yourself, self-discipline, fortitude. You have to understand all those things that I just, grittiness, the ability to endure, all of those things are skills, things that we can do better. And so when you understand that first and foremost, going out and starting to do video, going out and starting to better understand how to create content and be that digital mayor, it's going to become easier. Um, Julie Swenson, I don't know if you're on the call. You came to a video class that Dave Savage and I put on up here in Seattle with Jeremy Forcier. And, and I picked you out of the crowd. I'm like, why don't you, you don't do video. You're like, I don't like the video. I like how I look. Julie started doing video since that class. Dude, she's crushing it. She just landed a 40 lot builder account because of a video she's posted. And so she got over that fear. She got over that anxiety. She put herself in an uncomfortable position. And now she's doing video and look what happened. Julie just landed the preferred lender for a big builder in her neighborhood. And so it's now she's got more confidence and that's going to steamroll another part of that. Another part of, of, of mental toughness that I love. And I love this idea around momentum. I think there's not enough talk about this in our industries and in sales. Momentum is big. Julie has momentum. Successful people take advantage when they recognize momentum and they double down on what they're doing. And so as, as it relates to becoming a digital mayor, I think there's a couple of things that you have to understand. Uh, the first thing is your job, our job as mortgage professionals, as real estate agents, whatever you're selling is to educate the consumer, period. If you're trying to become the digital mayor and all you're doing is selling, selling rates, selling you, hey, if you need to get pre-approved this weekend, call me. That's not the way to go about it. Um, like I said earlier, I started writing a mortgage blog in 2010. That mortgage blog today organically generates a lot of business for me. And it's because all I do on that, none of it is advertisement. Sure, it's on my website. And sure, there's a bar that comes down the side of the page and says, hey, if you would like to set up, schedule a meeting with me or if you'd like to get a rate quote, let me know. But for the most part, it's educating people on loan programs, the how-tos around fixing your credit or, say, or things like that. So understanding if you're going to be a digital mayor, if you, if you want to get into that space on social media or on YouTube, you have to begin with the heart of an educator. You have to educate. All right. The other part, if I could give you some advice. Time, around time this, out. Yep, time out. Yep. Every mortgage professional, if you listen to um, this Friday's Mastermind, the whole call was great, but Jeremy Forcey joined us in the last 15 to 20 minutes. He did a rant on the three decisions, which there's a quick hit on. And then he did a whole rant on what's your business why, or he called it my work why, my work why. And, and you know, he knew his, he had it written down in his workspace. It was quick and easy to read, and it had the word advice in it. You know, in Dan's case, the word educate. Yep. You know, if, if your work why, and how you show up doesn't have advice, doesn't have, you know, um, education, then you're, you're just not going to get there. So I would I'd recommend everybody on this call, if you do not have your work why yep. written down somewhere in your workspace, get on it. You know, the more yep. personal it is, the more clear yep. you are on it, yep. the more you remember it day after day, yep. the more successful you'll be at everything else you'll do. Anyways, keep going. Yeah, no. I just wanted to really hit that hard. That's so big. It's so big. And, and mine is educate. I am, I'm a former educator. I'm a coach, a uh, former baseball coach, and you teach. And so, so the second component, the first is educating, creating content. The second component is that you've got to keep it under two minutes or less. 
people's attention spans are shrinking today. And so give them bite-sized pieces. I love Instagram. I love Instagram right now because you can't post a video for more than one minute or it turns into IGTV, right? So keeping it short and to the point, it's really pushed me to make a more impactful message. Dave, you and I, and in fact, you, you encouraged me once you introduced me to him, you encouraged me to hire him and I did, but you had a guy by the name of Robert Stover um, on your call a couple of years ago, it was about two years ago, um, on how to create a message that sticks. Um, I encourage you to connect with Robert, go back and watch that call, incredible. And, and since then I've hired him twice now to really help refine my messaging. I want one or two sentences that really capture that really gets you as a, as a viewer to go, okay, uh, this means a little bit more to me. So I'm going to watch the next clip or I'm going to watch this. I read the yeah, hey, well, yeah, like well, this. That, that call and I'm going to post it in the group down below. It was called hook chain. You remember what the, the metaphors were? I remember there was a hook and a chain in it. A hook and a chain. And, uh, well, we'll find it. It'll be posted down below. So, so check that out. Yeah. So, so Dan, we got about six, 14 yeah. more minutes. I've got a few more questions that I want to bring into the conversation. Anything else you want to add to that before I ask more questions? Up? So we're going to educate. We're going to keep it down to about two minutes, two minutes or less. And then the third big component, because I don't want you to overthink this, just use, I want to make sure like right now with this call, Dave, and we kind of did this with intention. I'm literally, I'm using my iPhone right now on this Zoom call and I'm using my, I, my iPhone headset. Super simple. So everything doesn't have to be mass produced or edited. We're not Larry King or Carson Daly. The whole idea is raw, organic content. So, I mean, you could even be walking with your phone. Hey, this is Dan Keller. Man, just saw the breaking news. The Fed decided to hold tight. They're not, they're not raising the Fed funds rate. This means blank. And we talk about it a one minute video or less. And then your heading of that is something, breaking news that is going to allow homeowners to save or, or people to save hundreds of thousands of dollars over the next two years, dot, 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 your video. It will get views. You do that over time, you're going to become the digital mayor. So those are three big tips I have. And you're gonna get good at it. The more okay. reps you yeah. do, the better, you gotta, you gotta do it. You know, your, your, your camera on your phone yep. works great, you yep. know, until you have already created lots of content. Yep. Don't worry about getting a better camera than your phone. Uh, if you're not doing a mortgage coach video, you're completely missing it. If you're not doing text videos, yep. just put your phone against the wall and record a text video to someone and then graduate yep. into, you know, video news that you're putting in Instagram and Facebook. So a couple things, you know, reminder to everybody, we are going to Facebook Live. I noticed, Luke, you said you get a lag. My guess is you don't have your phone or whatever you're viewing Facebook Live getting internet. So remember folks, mortgage coach, content and interviews, unless there's a good reason to let people come in and watch it on Zoom, is going to Facebook Live. So get used to watching our content on Facebook Live. Um, one person asked a question, uh, Christine, Christina Livingston wanted to know, what do you do to recover mentally from losing a big loan, big deal, big realtor? Yeah. You know, what's, how, what do you do either physically or mentally yeah. to overcome, you know, a big loss? What's up, Christina? So good to hear you and see you on the call. Um, that's big. And so I take that back to my athletic days, the, the understanding that it's going to happen. Okay. And understanding that you forget about the loss when you hit. So for example, when I was a when I was an athlete or I was a coach and we got our butts whipped or I had a bad game, you forget about it the next time you hit a home run. You forget about it the next time you beat that team. So being mentally tough enough to go out and go get another win, Christina, that's the biggest thing. You know, Zig Ziglar has, has said this, nobody drowns from falling into water, right? For falling into a mud puddle or, or into a lake, they drown by staying down. And that's so, it's, it's so true. I think it sells people, we get down and we stay down. And so I would just say, it, it, and by the way, Christina, this happens to me. It, it happens often. It happens to all of us. And so it's, you know, like, hey, one, what can I learn from this? Why did I lose this deal? Why did I lose this deal? 
The second thing is, all right, move on. Okay, I'm gonna get better from it. Mentally tough people understand that obstacles, they're okay. Obst this, these are, this is totally fine, it's a learning experience. And when you learn to embrace that, not that we all wanna lose deals, but when you do, if you learn from it, and then go out and get yourself another win. When I have a bad day, most of the time, what I do, if I lose a loan, or that realtor is unhappy, I try to go out and make a few more phone calls and get a win. And I try to end the day on a win. So I don't go to bed that night feeling sorry for myself because that's just like momentum. That's negative momentum and that'll lead you. So I, ho I hope that helps. Great. But it happens, it happens great. All of us. No, great advice. Good activity. Easier said than done sometimes. Yep. But, uh, you know, get out there, get after it. Uh, Julie was on. She was on Zoom, but now she's on Facebook Live. Good job, Julie. What's up, Julie? And anyway, she just, you know, said mad respect to you. She's getting out and getting after it, being the digital mayor of Tacoma. T -town, so maybe. Yeah. Good, good job. It just has a lot of appreciation and respect for you. Cool. Uh, you know, one person asked if you're a Goggins fan. And yeah, we, yeah. we both love Dave Goggins. Audio book is the way to go. Yep. Uh, even if you like to read, still do the audio book. So that's what's up on that, Bob. Um, Lynette, F-I-N-D, forget it, next deal. Yep. yep. Agreed. Uh, let's see here. Louise Thaxton, man. It's such an honor to have Louise in today's call, yep. uh, providing color and feedback. She put a great quote from Jim Rohn. There, um, there is the pain of discipline and the pain of regret. Discipline weighs an ounce. Yep. Regret weighs a ton. Yeah. So, yep. Louise, so, so true. Good leadership. So, we're in the last nine minutes. I want to close out with a real push for people to, at the end of this call, write down your goals. If it's, and, and, and really, three goals. I want your outbound call goals. And we're not talking about contacts. We're talking about dials. How many times are you going to try to get on the phone with a client, a realtor, a referral partner? How many, how many times are you going to get up to bat per day and per week? Mm -hmm. Write it down. You know, the, the contest that we're doing this month is 30 of those a day, yeah. 150 a week. Uh, this is the mortgage coach community. And we believe that advice is an essential part of your success. Yeah. We think 10 a week is doable, but hey, if your goal's three or five, whatever, whatever your goal is, write it down. Yeah. And then I am going to ask you to make a goal, that digital mayor goal, you know, whatever it is. Or you know what? I'm not going to be the digital mayor. Cross that off. Have a third goal, business goal, that's yeah. going to help you close yeah. more loans. But I want everybody to write that down. If you do want to share it in the group, we would love to be your accountability partner. You know, put what your goal is. And, and we won't be judging you, you know? I mean, whatever your goal is, is your goal. And then, and then get out there and get after it. So Dan, for anybody and everybody that writes down their goals, uh, you're, you're coaching people. We're closing out a sales meeting. You got seven minutes. Um, you give them direction, give them advice on how to now have a successful day, a successful week, and close out April strong. Bring it. Yeah, so... What I would do right now, how to close out April, and uh, we're, we're, in a, we're in an incredible economy right now. We have rates that are dropping. I think the reason why, so, so I'm in the core, and right now they're, they're, they're doing March madness and then April madness, which is uh, 10 days in a row, you're making 30 phone calls a day. And it's much like what, what Wally, I, like, I think all great loan reps understand right now, I don't care how you frame it. Um, how you slice it and dice it. You need to be making phone calls right now. You need to call every single one of your past clients, even if they have a 3.875 30 year fix. Like I was talking to a loan rep the other day and they're like, well, I mean, a lot of my clients have great rates. Awesome. Call them, <laughs> check in. They may want cash out. They may have a friend or family member that they know they just talked to at church on Sunday. You know, it just, I've heard numerous and you're building and, a client for life. So call them yeah. and show them you care even when you don't need them. Yeah, it's when Wally and I mean, you have a ton of superstars on your on your show talking about annual reviews. That's never kept Wally from making an annual review. Oh, they have a 3.625 30 year fix. They, rates are four and a half. I'm not going to call them. There's so many other things to talk about. 
Hey, by the way, Dave, would you do me a huge favor? Your set, your mortgage is incredible. It looks like you are dialed in. The mortgage I put you in two years ago is right in line with your short-term and long-term financial goals. Would you do me a favor? If you hear of anyone talking about either buying or maybe wanting to lower their interest rate right now, would you give them my information? Would you introduce us? Oh, absolutely, Dan. It's an at-bat, man. You got it. So that's the whole idea of these 30 calls is you're calling people to get more at-bats. At-bats lead to hits. Hits lead to wins. Wins lead to more revenue. It's that easy. So I want to get a script out of you because one thing we're, I'm passionate about and I know you're passionate about is that you're a mortgage coach and you can do more than just show people the payment difference. You can show the cost difference over five years. You can show them the value of prepaying their mortgage. So, I mean, you have superpowers that most loan officers don't have, which is, hey, I can, you know, refinance, look at the savings over five years, and then what if you, ref you put that savings into your um, prepaying your mortgage, look how much interest you save, look how much yep. advice you have. So give some scripting yep. around how you have that conversation around a total cost analysis so that a, a family is pumped. They're like, oh, mm -hmm. I want one of those. Uh, what's yeah. that sound like for me? So I'll give you a, just a real time example from yesterday. I called a past client and, and they have a decent rate. They're like four and a quarter, right? But he reached out to me because he saw something on social media from, uh, that I posted and the conversation went a little like this. So that's 4.25 is a pretty good rate right now. But let me ask you this. His name was Greg. Let me ask you this, Greg. Um, I would like to talk about a few other things that it's relative to your mortgage, like where you're at debt wise. Have you guys taken on any additional debt since you got your mortgage? Well, yeah, we bought a camper. Okay. Um, and so, and I know they put down about 20 percent. they put down 20%. So I know they have the equity. It was about two years, about a year and a half, two years ago. So the conversation went down the road of, okay, I'm going to evaluate a couple of things right now. Equity wise, you're in a great equity position. Number two, did you take on any new debt? Um, and then are there any financial, decisions that you're about to embark on and we have conversations around that he wanted to he was wondering if it would make sense to pull out about fifty thousand dollars because they were thinking about paying off some debt he was also thinking about buying a rental home it came up in that conversation and then the third thing which led me to believe that he's massively confused and that's where i can come into place with a mortgage coach tca he was wondering if he went from a 30 year to a 15, how that would look. What do I do with my equity and what do I do with this opportunity? So what this report was able to put together in three separate columns was if you pulled money out and eliminated debt, here's how your total household blended debt would look. If you went and you purchased an investment home, you've just added to your total net worth over time. So here's an option. And we spent some time talking about that. The last option, which I wasn't a huge fan of, was taking it from a 30 to a 15, but it was there for him to see. And so the conversations are more around, listen, I have some software. Do you remember when you purchased your home with me? Yeah, you remember how I presented loan options to you in that report? Oh yeah, yeah, it was great. I'm gonna send you another one that's just like it relative to the questions we talked about. Give me about an hour and it'll be in your inbox. And I said, I want you to review that. Let me know a good time to call you and we'll go over that. And so that's kind of, I don't, that's raw. Like, I don't know if you're looking for some specific script, but when you ask questions, you get the answers that were then that will then kind of take you down a road. And that's when just becoming a mortgage coach, I guess, guru or a great loan officer really comes into play. You understand what they're saying and then you know what to say. Love it, Ben. So guys, we want to help you get value all week long. This has been a great hour conversation with Dan Keller. Uh, when you think of mortgage coach, you know, the total cost analysis, that's our technology. This is part of the community, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn articles. And then we're turning that into sales training, you know, and that's really proud of the mortgage coach team. We've created this mortgage strategies page. And when we launch our new platform, it's all about, you know, helping you guys learn from the best in the business, the best in the business leveraging our community to help you get better. So I want to remind you, we're, we're really going to be pushing to watch all of our content in our Facebook group. Uh, please, if you like it, if you got value, give it a like. That's how we know that we're creating content that's valuable. It's the easiest way for you to just, you know, give us a nod. Yep, that was good stuff. 
And then, and then we love comments, you know, whether it's a positive feedback or a quote or a question, best way to give value to us. Now, as I said, we're, we're in the process of making this decision right now. You know, we're not going to eliminate Zoom. So we'll still use Zoom to power our interviews, our community conversations, but they'll really become a place for the panelists and the leaders. And everybody watching this content will be watching it on Facebook Live. So if you like that idea, you know, click here. If you don't like that idea, let us know why. You know, comment down. There'll, there'll be a decision being made by the end of the month. You know, do we keep multiple platforms going? Do we really push all of our content through a combination of YouTube and Facebook Live? So I also want to remind everybody this contest, is, this game is game changing. Uh, this is the interview where the whole idea came to me. Uh, it's a one minute, 18 minute interview with two top loan officers have both done over a thousand TCAs. So check that out and then, you know, start playing the game guys, you know, 30 calls a day, 10 TCAs a week, and uh, hopefully it becomes valuable for you. So Dan, any last words before yeah. we consider this call a wrap? Last closing remarks. Don't give yourself a choice. I think, Successful people talk as if they don't have any other options. And you know what to do. Do it. Don't negotiate with your subconscious. Don't give yourself a choice. Just do it. You're the man, bro. Have a great day, everybody. Hope you got value. Thanks for all the participation and engagement in our community. See yep. ya.